They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The elevator. Uh. That was Masia. We gotta hurry. How come? Tom Thomas is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with him. Can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there. Hooray! We can go! Wait a second! I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simkanolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention please on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts. Our next act, feats of strength. It won't come out. I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting onto an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. 
or the Fixies. I reach the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you? Uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? Hmm. Sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you two. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies! That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're Fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zemka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world, who are friends with the only kid in the whole world, who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. 
Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas. You. Tom Thomas, you didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No. Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So... We need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone and give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Tom Thomas, what did you drop in here that is so sticky? It's probably the soda I was drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. What in the world is this red stuff down here? That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're going to be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. 
Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> the flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac, uh, uh, um, the pack mat and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. <laughs> A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka, and what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. Uh Hey, 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 hey,
Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed. Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! The microphone. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> Moo? <sighs> Fear! Hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Aliyah, what are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger, and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas. Why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Suka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. <laughs> we talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. Nolik! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you wanna see the pirates or the robots? I don't wanna see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's cause you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking, 
and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh... Uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. <laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. The mirror. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Why has this mirror been standing here in the hallway for a whole week already? My dad can't seem to find any time to hang it on the wall. Are you sure it won't fall? It hasn't fallen so far. <laughs> so, Nolik, do I look like Spider-Man? <laughs> ah! No, you don't look like him at all. Yeah! Hey! You can't climb on walls like Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I can do it. Just give your chewing gum to me. See that? Like in the movie. Oh, like that's really hard. Just keep watching. That's hard. Feast your eyes and see what the only spider fixie in the whole wide world can do. could see their reflection was to look into water. The very first mirrors appeared about 5,000 years ago. They were made out of silver or bronze. Legend has it that the Greek scientist Archimedes once burned down an entire enemy fleet with the help of mirrors like these. But humans only became able to see their reflections well after they started making mirrors out of glass. And we still use glass mirrors today. But of course, mirrors are not only used for looking at our reflections. They are also used in telescopes to collect the light of distant stars. And humans also use mirrors inside of automobile headlights so they will shine even brighter. Just look at all the things mirrors can do for you. Whew. Looks like it didn't break. Help me lift it so we can lean it back up on the wall. <gasps> Tom Thomas! I've gotten a reflection in the mirror. That's impossible, because only vampires can't see their reflections. Or ghosts. But I'm not in there. So then, I guess you've become a ghost. <gasps> no, not a ghost. I don't like them. Hey, what's all the racket? Did you guys get yourself into trouble again? Suka! Me and Tom Thomas were playing Spider-Man, and I I turned into a ghost for some reason. Yeah, ghost. <laughs> That's silly. They don't even exist. Oh, you don't have any reflection either. Simka, you're a ghost just like I am. <gasps> That's just goofy. Look, just look, here I am. Well, hi there. But why couldn't I see myself over here? It's probably because the mirror is scratched on the back. Tom Thomas, do you think you can rotate the mirror? It's just like I said. Some of the special coating got scraped off of the back. 
A mirror is not just a piece of plain glass. Plain glass lets light pass through it, but a mirror reflects light. To turn a piece of glass into a mirror, people spray a special shiny coating on one of its sides that reflects everything. And then to protect the shiny coating, an extra layer of paint is put on top of it. But even with that protection, you still have to handle mirrors carefully. Because mirrors can easily scratch or even break. And do you think that this one is possible to fix? Yeah, we can do it. It's a good thing you have a pack of mat with you. I thought we might need it after you started screaming over here. Don't tell me you've got paint in there for a mirror. A pack of mat's got everything you'll ever need. It's all ready. <gasps> My dad's coming. Tom Thomas, what are you doing here? Checking if you hung it. Yeah, right. I'll definitely hang that mirror on the wall soon. Hmm, like tomorrow. Or next week. The pack mat Uh, Simka, can I have the pack mat I'd like to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pack -a, a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was gonna be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you going to ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course. Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance. Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are Be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Dolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. Krampus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <laughs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how...
paper. I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back. <gasps> Krampus, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> A drill is such a great tool indeed. To drill a hole, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could lose it. A drill is such a great tool indeed. And if it's not a drill, right! Hammers, wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing. You already passed. What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need. You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack of mat But how could you know that? That's a secret. And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets. The Chain Reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Will you? 
Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb. The deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. They're all done. Nolik, bring them in. <laughs> and now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! So totally awesome! I can't believe what I saw! How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction! What? A chain reaction! The barcode. And so, what do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ugh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Mm, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. 
Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Uh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In, in the refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love 